apologize for something I said after the game uh, Saturday night. That's not indicative of who I want to be or what I stand for. And you know you messed up when you get home to your wife, and she's more upset that you won the game, but she's more upset at something you said, and it's not what I represent. It's not the kind of behavior I want to have. So I want to say that to dog fans out there and everybody. I'm going to try to handle that a lot better. And it was an emotional win, and I was very emotional in that, and got to do a better job of that. But uh, to Chamberlain, I also want to say uh, she comes to every Thursday night to this event in here. We have a radio show. She's here with us every Thursday night. She takes pictures. She does an outstanding job. And that was a very uh, scary moment. I know for our players and for me, because we looked over and you know she was motionless at the time. Uh, and it was a pretty scary situation. I know for Brian and Jake, but we want to wish her well and thank her for all the work she does. She does a tremendous job. Um, with that, I'll give a couple updates on the injuries. I, I don't ever know exactly who you're asking about, but the Cade is, is banged up. Don't think he's going to be able to practice today, uh, but we think he's going to be able to play, and he's going to be able to hopefully practice Tuesday. Ben is uh, still fighting the injury bug, too, on the lower extremity. Um, we're hopeful he's able to go. And then Kager will be cleared to practice, just be a matter of whether he can sustain. Um, a little bit about Texas A&M. You know, Jimbo Fisher is an unbelievable coach. This team will probably be one of the most talented teams we've played against. We all know who their three losses are against. I, th I feel like the three losses are against top ten teams uh, that are really, really good football teams. And they have an immense amount of talent. As far as their receiving core, will be one of the best we've played against. Uh, they're, they're total, they got, I think, eight or nine starters back on offense. Really, basically every position outside tight end and a running back is coming back for their team. And when you watch them on tape, it really jumps off the film at you. So our kids understand the challenge we got. It's part of the grind in the SEC to be beat up and have to play a, another good football team. Um, and that's what they are. They're coming to Sanford Stadium for the first time. So uh, Jimbo and I have been on the staff together before. Obviously, Coley and him have been on the staff uh, together for a while and got a lot of respect for the way his team, his teams play. And they're really good in all three phases. So this will be a big test after an emotional win uh, that we'll have to prepare really well for. So with that, I'll open it up. Bill, I'll ask my question, Kirby. Kellen <laughs> uh, Mon, uh, maybe as good a quarterback as anybody you've ever faced. Kentucky quarterback in the run, of course, and Notre Dame book was good too, but this guy seems to combine both of them with a, you know, dangerous uh, running and passing skills. Very much so. He has probably improved as much as a player from high school to now as any quarterback I've ever seen. I liken it to when when Dak first went to Mississippi State and Dan took him and did all these really good things with him. Jimbo has really, I mean, this, this kid has a tremendous arm talent. We know the athlete he is. We know he can run, but that's not, you know, it's not like you say, well, this guy's a runner first. He's a really good passer. And the beauty of it is he, he, he plays in a pro-style offense and throws to some really good weapons and checks things, moves things around but is extremely athletic. And when I say athletic, I don't mean like, oh, he's gonna scramble for a first down. I mean, when he takes off running, he continues running. And there's guys out there that just can't catch him. And he, he doesn't always look to do that, but uh, when he does, it's extremely dangerous. So it makes you play him uh, a different kind of way. So we, we've got a, you know, we got a tough, tough charge in front of us. Kirby, with, with Spiller and Richardson, they each went over 125 against South Carolina the other night, and a lot of their damage was done when they were both in the backfield. I mean, they were clearing holes for each other. Uh, for years, we watched two back sets, but with what they're doing, uh, how unique is it, and how much do you see that, and, and how challenging will that be? I hate to compare it, but it, I mean, it's completely different football, so don't misquote me on this, but it's like the triple option of today when you have two backs in the backfield, because nobody knows really how to defend it anymore. I mean, Coach Dooley's back there, and he could probably tell you how to defend it because you toss the ball and you run a sweep and nobody knows how to, ha how to handle a lead blocker. Now, they don't do that all the time, don't, don't get me wrong. But when they do it, they're very efficient. I mean, he still has option plays, and it, uh, it, it keeps people honest. It keeps you from saying, well, I'm going to do an overload this way or I'm going to do one of these unsound defenses to go attack the quarterback when they run an option play and uh, they do a tremendous job of it. They're very different runners, but he, he did those, some of those same things at FSU when he had Dowling. You know, he uses the stretch ball, I mean, he uses some different plays to really highlight the two backs he has. And 
they're, they're running the ball more and more efficiently as the seasons. Like you can see how they've gotten better and better and better at running the ball every game, and it really came to fruition against South Carolina. Coach, I know Mary Beth might be mad at you, but I know your players made it up. Uh, you know, you feel that you know you, you they take on your passion for the game, and you, you know you might say something that you uh, you regret, I guess later. Uh, they probably do. They, our players have passion, and energy. I have. I mean, I wear my feelings on my sleeve all the time. I mean, you see it out there when Trevon got a sack. That's that's just kind of who I am. You just got to be able to control that and make good decisions. And I didn't do that, so. I regret that part of it, but uh, I also am the one that has to represent this organization, and I want to do that the right way. And uh, and I, it was an emotional win, but obviously we moved on to Texas A and M now, and that's the focus. Kirby, you've gone up against the Texas A and M team before in Alabama. Um, this is their first visit to Athens, their first game against Georgia as an SEC team. Uh, you know, what were your thoughts just on the uniqueness of that and uh, do you wish that these West teams would rotate in and play uh, in Athens more often? Yeah, I don't know how to make it happen other than a nine-game conference schedule. I mean, you, I, it's crazy that they've been in how many years? Y'all know better than me. Twelve. Since 12, 12, 12. Yeah. And so they've been in 12, 12, since 12 or 12 since years? 12. 12. Oh, so it's not 12 years. 2012. I got you. So that's how many years? Seven, seven years. years, and they still haven't played Georgia. You know, that's just that's that's kind of wild to think about. But um, it's it's. I mean, I know their fan base is passionate. I mean, from when we played there at, at Alabama, they bring. I mean, they, they will. You will see their fan base in Athens because they all want to make this trip. Just like it'll be reciprocated when we go there, whenever that is. So, uh, very passionate fan base. It's just sad that that doesn't happen often enough. But I mean, our conference is big. And we got a lot of good football teams, so it takes time to circle it and go all the way around it. And I'm not really here to debate the nine-game schedule versus the eight-game schedule. It's just that's the way it fell, and that's who we got. I know this. Their team is not intimidated by any environment, okay? They, they, they go to Clemson and play. All right, they go to Tuscaloosa and play every year. They get to play at Auburn every year. They get to play at LSU every year. I mean, that, that's not going to be what this game's about. They, they, they grew up in Texas high school football. 80% of their team is Texas-made, so – they got a good football team, and they got a team that's they're going to be in every game they play because they're well coached and they got good football players. Kirby, uh, obviously you, you and your team try to block out the noise, but at, at this point, is, is the offense playing a little bit of a chip on their shoulder? Because people continue to talk about it, but they're in state to use a 21 point lead. And then along those lines, uh, still trying to get Swift to break or any of your running backs. What's kind of contributed to – has it been good back-end play or just a missed block on really popping a big, long run? You know, there's several runs the other day that um, that were close. Um, they were good runs. They just weren't super explosive where we got to the second level. Some of that's the back-end. Some of that's you don't create the angles when all the extra guys are in the box. Um, you contribute to a lot of things. I, I contributed to good defense. You know, when I think of Auburn, you turn on that tape, they run to the ball. They hit, they tackle, they got really good, a lot better than people even thought, corners, and they're, they're physical up front. So, got a good football team, and, and so does Missouri, guys. I mean, you start looking at it, it it's, they, they got good football teams in our conference, and I mean, look at us defensively. You're not giving up a lot of explosive runs either. So, across the board, it's tough to do that, and uh, we're certainly uh, looking, trying, uh, reaching, trying to find ways to, to create those advantageous situations. But I just, I just know our conference – is very defensive when it comes to rankings and statistics. There's a lot of good teams in it. As far as like a chip on their shoulders? Yeah, I think their whole team's that way. I think, you know, you play play better when you have a chip on your shoulder. And um, I, I certainly think the defense and special teams would be in the same boat as the offense. Of, uh, you're motivated, I always say this, intrinsically, not through what people say and write. Because when you're motivated by that it controls and the narrative is oh well everybody said bad things about Georgia so then they started to play better that's really not the case the case is they've worked really hard to get better and improve and sometimes the outcomes we have are based on what the opponent does not based on what we do and uh, each guy on our offenses I guarantee you they're giving the best they can they've had great practices they've had uh, uh, good I mean they, we go against them good on good I see them make good plays it just hasn't come to fruition in a game at least not against Auburn as often as we'd like. We had good drives, and 
I thought that our offensive staff did a really good job. The three touchdowns we had were all plays that they came up with and designed and had for Auburn. They weren't every game plays. They were plays that were meant to, to help us against Auburn, and they did. Coach, I was, on that topic, I was going to ask you, I think five of your last six opponents had a bye week before they played you. How, how much of a disadvantage was that for your offense when a team has an extra week? And, and you mentioned the three new plays. How difficult is it to come up with new things when you've been that well scouted the last month and a half? It's never difficult to come up with new things, but you have to be careful. Good football teams do what they do. Best football teams I've been around, they ain't, they're, not, they're not tricking you. You don't trick people in our conference. You, you block them. You, 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 you don't scheme them. You, you, you find a way to get your best player or whoever your guy is a way to be successful. So I don't know that we can just scheme them up, but we certainly had new wrinkles to the same plays that proved to be successful in that game, and they hit at the right time because a lot of our drives didn't amount to much, but the ones that did didn't end in field goals. That's probably more important than having a bunch of field goals. And uh, that, that proved to be the difference, at least in that game. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Kirby. The, about the off week, I, obviously we don't control that. I couldn't remember what you said first, but I didn't realize that if that's the case, five of the last six seems that seems crazy. I didn't realize that that was the case. I didn't know the stats. Somebody said about them being nine and zero after off weeks, <laughs> or Gus had been nine and zero after off weeks, and uh, you know I'm glad nobody told me that before the game. How much more can you get done in that bye week? I guess to follow up. Well, I, I, I think you rest your team. Uh, most coaches have a philosophy in the bye week. You don't go practice for the other team you're going to play. Kids get sick of it. You can't practice for the same team for two straight weeks without getting fed up with it. I'll, I'm always concerned with that. What you do is you rest your team. You look for new ideas. You look for new new plays, new wrinkles, a new way to do the same thing. I think that part helps you. But you're also always concerned about coming off an off week, how they're going to respond. Kirby, from your perspective, what has contributed to the improvement in the run defense from last year this especially with I think Dan's done a good job. This is no knock on Mel because I'm as much responsible for it as anything. Dan's done a good job of uh, of bringing, you know, whether it's new ideas, uh, you know, less less risk averse. Uh, we got secondary back. I mean, when you got a new secondary and you got true freshmen, true freshmen or sophomore that haven't played back there making a lot of calls. The last year's defense was almost so completely new because if you go back to the year before that, there were kids that had played for three and four years off that that team that went to the national championship. So it was it was a tough year defensively, man. You were you were you were holding on every time somebody moved or motioned. This year you feel more comfortable being aggressive and uh, we're reaping the benefits of experience. Kirby, what's been the key for you guys each year you all kind of, you know, it's tough obviously to run the table in college football as you say and had a tough loss but it always seemed that here you are again and that you know where you kind of control your fate and you know Yeah, I, I, just, I don't. That's not a message. We don't. You don't control that. These kids live and die by these things, man. I mean, they they got them with them. They're gonna they're gonna see it. They're gonna hear it. They're gonna. You, 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 what you try to emphasize is the facts. Here are the facts. If we block and tackle people, we're pretty good. You know what I mean? If we block and tackle people. If we do simple better, we're pretty good. If we don't and we turn the ball over and we don't play well in special teams and we give up big explosive plays, we're not very good. So what's going to allow me to do those things? None of the other stuff matters. None of it matters. So, you know, if you get their focus on playing better and getting better, especially the second part of your roster, because we got twos that are having to play now. And so now this week, two more twos are going to play. The next week, maybe more twos are going to play because you got more guys getting injured. So how do I get the rest of my roster uh, better is, is really all we focus on. Kirby, you touched on this uh, Saturday night, but the job Jake, Jake Camarda mm -hmm. did on 11 punts. And how, and how important, you know, obviously he's, had, he's been up and down. All of us can see the strength of his leg. But how important was it, you think, for uh, overall for him to put a, a performance together like that? In that moment, it was obviously one of the pivotal, I mean, it was a field position game. So with him doing that, he flipped the field position, did a tremendous job. Um, can't say enough about it. I mean, the, the, the thing about all the confidence and sticking with him, we're at practice every day. <laughs> so 
y'all don't get the fortune of seeing that, but he, he he does that all the time. So everybody's like, "Well, is Jake going to be your continue to be your punter?" Well, yeah, he gets sixty yards at practice. It's just a matter of when it comes to fruition in the game, and you you know you just keep working with him. I think psychologically he's handling things a lot better, and uh, mentally it's he's been much stronger and he's done a really good job. He was very impactful in that game. Just hope he can, can continue to do that. And we got to cover him well because. You know, you can outkick your coverage when you punt, and he uh, he's close to doing that. He's just booming the ball, but we've had good coverage with him. Kirby, this is your last SEC game in the regular season, but it's the first SEC team that you've played that has a starting quarterback who was the starter a year ago. Mm -hmm. I know a couple of times it's been freshmen you faced, like with Nix this past weekend, but even with Tua's situation this past week, do, does it seem like quarterbacks to you are getting hurt more often and, and – I know Nick after the game said, I don't I don't put injuries in my thinking when they can play. If they're healthy, they play. I don't do you do you find yourself thinking more about injuries? And I'm just kind of curious about that quarterback position, why it seems to be happening more than ever. Well, I think this has been talked about several times. So your people have asked me this question. I do think they're getting hurt at a little higher rate than usual. I don't know if that's a, a outlier or if that's gonna become the norm. I think it's because design of offenses is all NFL mentality, get the backs out, get everybody out. You don't see people max protect. You don't see people seven man protect. You see people run their quarterbacks. That's an extra option to rush the ball. Um, as offenses have grown and scoring has exploded, so has the exposure of quarterbacks. And defenses take less regard for contain, for true base defensive principles. And all they look for is how can I hit your quarterback? Right, wrong, or indifferent, that's what they're trying to do what we try to do, that's what everybody tries to do. So when you do that, they get hit more. And when they get hit more, they get injured more. And I don't think the trend's gonna go away. I think our conference and NCAA rules are trying to protect quarterbacks more. So we actually coach the decision you make to stay off the quarterback because it, that'll kill you. And they're protecting them. But ultimately they're getting hit more, I mean legally hit. And that creates more injuries, which is tough. Uh, for all the concern about the lack of explosive runs and the injuries along the offensive line, DeAndre Swift's still top 1,000 yards at this point in the season. How has he sort of improved every year and sort of got to this point right now? It just seems like he's you know, able to, regardless of what's in front of him, short out yards to be best. Yeah, he's always been really talented. I don't know the, the, the talent, maybe his quickness, uh, his knowledge, his protections, his, his route running, all that has improved throughout his career here. Dale's done a great job with him. But he's, he's been uber talented the whole time he was here. You know, he's just playing with some really good players in the backfield. And uh, what I think this year has shown is the exact question everybody had. Can he endure? Can he take on the load? Can he handle the responsibility of X number of carries, whatever that number is? And I think he's proven that, that uh, he can do that well. And, I mean, to me, he's one of the most talented players in the country. He, he, he makes things happen when they're not there. And uh, we certainly wouldn't be where we are today without him. Kirby, you've uh, coached against Jimbo Fisher before when you were at Bama. He was at Florida State. Uh, you gone against him? Yeah, we have one game, I think, the first year maybe. But I've had, I've had uh, I mean, I was on staff with him at LSU. And, um, you know, I've been around Jimbo almost all my life. I was as a player. He was a coach coaching there at Auburn and things. So uh, I've been around Jimbo a lot. Got a lot of respect for him. And, um, you know, he's always been a close friend. The senior class, it's their last game in Stanford this weekend. And the senior class has a lot of eye icons. What impact has the senior class had, and what are your final departing thoughts for them as they play their last game in Stanford? Uh, just proud of everything they've meant to our program. I mean, some of those seniors are part of our first class, but a, a few of those, I don't know how many, were still uh, the, the Tay Crowders and Mike Barnett's were already here. So it's a unique group. It's the first group that we've had for four years, um, and I'm just I'm happy for them. Uh, I, I want them to be able to enjoy. Um, the moment, but also understand that there's a very emotional game following up. When you have the senior day, it's always an interesting <clears throat> dynamic for those guys because they go out and have a different uh, routine before the game. But they meant so much to this program and just wanted to know that our university and our alumni will be here for them forever, regardless of where they go on to, that we're going to be able to help them and their dogs for life. Two more questions. Coach, this is, uh, I think this is the third straight year you're, you're nine and one through your first 10 games still in the, the playoff picture. How how does this team stack up um, maybe with the past teams as far as their health, and the evolution, and your, your thoughts about where they're at? I think every team's different. You know, it's really different. Because you think about 
three years ago this week or whatever week it was, you're in a completely different position. I mean, you're coming off being undefeated and, and, and getting your butt whipped to last year, more similar to this year, uh, having one early. And then um, each year is different. I, I think this team is uh, getting better. Um, I think the biggest thing is, I mean, this team is going to be defined what it does going forward, not what it's done in the past. And that's always the case. And this is a big one because they got a really good football team. And uh, our guys are coming off an emotional victory where we got to go get prepared for the grind of the SEC, which is another good football team. Kurt, how do you guys define third and manageable on offense? And when you look at Greenhouse, um, is there um, a common thing in terms of the down distance that we're struggling? Um, well, manageable with our offense, third down has been anything from one to 12. I mean, we, we, we've had a lot of success on third and long. Uh, and during the year, I certainly don't want to be in those. And uh, if you want to be all keep people off balance and you want to change things up, you're going to have to live with some third and tens because you're not always going to complete some, some shots and some uh, explosive play actions. Uh, but it's something we're always looking to do to uh, not be as predictable. And uh, it's also we got to serve who we are and we got to make sure that we can get into those situations where Jake's got a chance, whether it's to win it with his feet or he's got a chance to win it with uh, shorter routes or keep them honest on the run in third down. But uh, obviously we have to improve in that area, and this will be a, a big test for us. Thank you.